स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर अवलोकिता अग्रवाल आई एम एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर एंड प्लानिंग आई आई टी रूड की This course which I'm going to take is called architectural graphics or it is also known as engineering graphics or engineering drawing. So this is a common course across all engineering disciplines. So anybody who is wishing to become an engineer would definitely read the subject in the very first semester. So this is the course that we are going to take. Now what is this course all about? And I as i teach my students this course every semester every alternate semester there uh, is a kind of uh, fear related to this subject and students often dread this course majority of engineering students they they find it really difficult but actually it is quite an interesting subject and it is one of the most fundamental and one of the most important subjects that we should be reading so what this subject is all about this subject is the language so just assume that you are a grade 1 or a grade 2 student what do you understand what do you read what kind of subjects do you read you read the very fundamental of the subjects so what is that so in languages you understand what is the script of that language so for example english so you are start understanding the roman a b c and then you start forming those small four letter words three letter words you start to learn the uh, pronunciation the phonetics the diction exactly similar to that is the subject which is architectural graphics or engineering graphics so here what we learn is how do we draw so as an engineer or an architect what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to create ideas we are supposed to design structures machines and a lot of these uh, utility items around us now as an architect or an engineer i might be having certain idea in my mind but how do i convey it to the world how do i convey it to a manufacturing person who is going to actually implement my idea into reality the communication the language for communication is graphics so i will draw and the other person will understand now similar to the communication the languages there should not be any ambiguity between what i say and what the other person understands so there are certain standard rules so how a plan what is being viewed from the top will be drawn how something which if cut that is what we call a section how will it look so what is the nomenclature how do you represent materials so there are so many different materials the same object could be made out of brick it could be made out of concrete it could be made out of wood how do you differentiate though the object in the drawing may look like same but the material representation will be different and that is what we learn in this so that is one part of it the other part is when we start going into little detail little complexity now suppose just imagine all of you might have seen this uh, lotus temple in uh, new delhi even though it is in pictures now can you just imagine that how the architect and engineer would have conceived and then communicated to the uh, the builder team that how will the petals be designed how will the petals be constructed at what angle and all that now these are complex shapes so there could be simple regular solids like sphere or different types of prisms and cones there could also be little complex solids and planes like hyperboloids tetrahedrons and you know multiple other solids how do you actually generate those, those solids how would those solids look if you know seen from the top or side how will they intersect if you are putting so many of these solids together how would they look from the basic vocabulary of this particular language which is graphics we move on to say 
creating literature, keep creating poetry out of that. So that is what the entire domain of this particular subject is. But whether we are creating a very beautiful, complex, complicated poetry using the same language, we have to have our grammar correct. So in this particular course, we would not be going to creating the new ideas, new objects, which you will anyways be doing as part of your curriculum. But we would only be looking at how do we do that? If you have certain idea, how do you represent that? What is the grammar for it? How would the lines be drawn? How would the planes be seen? And how would you actually represent this entire idea? So I'm just hoping that at the end of this course, you will all be equipped with this fundamental knowledge of how to draw, how to understand, how to represent your ideas onto a plain sheet of paper. And once you have learned to do that, you will not be required to communicate your ideas in words like other people, the rest of the world do. We will only be communicating through the sheet, the drawing sheet. That is what our aim would be. So I just hope you find this course really useful. So go ahead with me on this course, which is on architectural graphics. Thank you and see you soon. Good morning. I am Dr. Avlokita Agrawal. I am an Associate Professor at Department of Architecture and Planning, IIT Roorkee. And this course which I am going to take now is on architectural graphics or engineering graphics. So the content mainly remains pretty much the same as far as we are talking about orthographic projection. So in this course, we will start from the fundamentals of uh, graphics not just orthographic projection. We would know about what are the different instruments, tools which are used for hand drawing the orthographic projection. And then we will gradually move on to understanding what orthographic projection is and how should we draw various objects. So in this first lecture, this which is just an introductory lecture, I will take you through the basics, basic understanding of what is architectural graphics, what is drawing, what is graphical communication and why at all is it needed. And then we will, uh, in the next lecture onwards, we will understand about the uh, different tools and equipments. So to start with, uh, if you look at any design, so anything that is designed around us, it could be a piece of furniture, it could be a toy, it could be a building, which is what we are ultimately aiming here to design. So if you look at anything that has been designed, we can see that there are different stages through which this final product of design has passed. So it was conceived by somebody, okay, I want a, a, a toy which is a spherical toy. So there is a design which is conceived in the minds of the designer. Once it has been conceived, after that it is further designed and analyzed that how will it be manufactured. So the third stage goes on to manufacturing. And then once it is man manufactured, it is ver verified whether it will work the way it is. it was intended to be designed or not. And once it has been verified, it is out as a product used by people and finally we dispose it of. At each one of these stages, we require uh, to communicate our ideas. So at the conception stage, we require to communicate what is conceived as an idea. At the design stage and the analysis, we need to communicate how uh, exactly, what are the dimensions, how exactly it is being uh, designed. So what our initial idea was, how will it be designed and analyzed and then to manufacture if we have to cast a die or whatever. So at each one of these stages, we need to have a precise communication of this idea for the next stage to progress. So if we look at this, 
design, the final design is actually the message. It is only the message and the language in which this message is conveyed is graphics. So basically graphics is actually a language. So when I am talking to you, when I'm communicating all of this, just imagine if there wasn't the screen, if there wasn't a graphics which is on the screen in the presentation and if I was all only talking through words, I was still communicating. So we are communicating, I am conveying my idea of graphics through a language which is which is being heard, which is composed of words, sentences and I am communicating. I could do the same thing or maybe mix both of these with the help of this. So I have I have a circle drawn here and I tell you that design is a message and graphics is actually the language to communicate that message. So it is basically language and it is used to communicate. So if you look at communication types, which is what I have just said, we basically have two types of communications. We have a general communication and we have a design communication. If you look at general communication, so all the languages that we read, that we study, for example, Hindi, English, whatever language you might be talking about, it is a way of communicating in general, okay? We could speak, we could write uh, through this language and what uh, this language is comprised of, it has words, it has its own grammar, it has vocabulary, it has punctuation, etc. Exactly all these same components which are part of the general communication, they can be equated with design communication. So if we talk about language here in general communication, it is the drawing. So what you understand as a language is what you understand through a drawing. And drawing is the language of engineers and architects. And in fact, not really just engineers and architects, primitive people used to communicate through drawings. And we have seen that. We have seen those old uh, cave paintings through which they were actually communicating about the lifestyle that they had. So uh, sociologists and historians have been able to deduce a lot of things from the drawings that the prehistoric uh, people, the primitive people in prehistoric times were able to uh, make. So language can be compared with drawing for uh, engineers and architects. Uh, like we have words, we have these different line characteristics. So for example, uh, we have these different words as I am speaking. So I speak, I use these words speak and draw and communicate. These are all words. Similarly, we have line characteristics. As we go forward in this course, we would see there is a continuous thick line, there is a continuous thin line, there is a dotted line, there is a dashed line and each one of this has a different meaning just as we have these different words which have different meanings. For example, speak to say. Continuous line is a solid object. It is a continuous edge being represented. And likewise, just like we have grammar, we have these symbols here. So how do you represent a fan which is going to be placed in a ceiling? There is a symbol for it and it is kind of standard. Uh, how do you represent a tap? How do you represent a staircase? How do you represent a cutout in the roof? Each one of these, they have standardized symbols and we use the same symbols. So just as you understand grammar, how to put these words together, we use symbols, how to put all these different lines together to represent meaning, communicate meaningful things and it is all standard. So grammar is just like grammar is standard. Similarly, symbols are standard, okay? Next, we have vocabulary. So we have so many words, so many different words for different things. Similarly, we have measurements, uh, not exactly uh, equating to vocabulary, but we have measurements to actually communicate the sense of scale, how big or how small is this going to be. We have punctuations and all other things. Similarly, here we have annotations and a lot of these things. Overall, even if you were 
to read a drawing without somebody explaining to you you should be able one should be able to understand what is being said through a drawing just like we understand a language composition so you read a poem you read newspapers where this this communication is happening magazine articles books anything just like we read them and we understand what the author has been wanting to say similarly we read a drawing and we understand what the architect or the engineer has been wanting to communicate so when we talk about communication through graphics we are essentially talking about the communication of an idea a design through this medium which is graphics so it is the uh, language using projections and there are different types of projections and uh, just like we are using these abbreviations and different words we are using these symbols as a standardized thing and overall it composes it comprises of this language however we have to be very particular that just like in general communication we have a bad language so sometimes if we don't use choose our words carefully it might communicate a wrong thing you know it might communicate a wrong message similarly in drawing also if we do not choose our lines our symbols carefully it might communicate something wrong and we might go ahead with a wrong design we might just go ahead with a with some something completely different being designed and constructed so similar to communication we have to be very careful of this language of design communication and how to standardize this so when i say that okay fan is represented in this fashion so this is a standard symbol for fan this is a standard symbol for uh, ventilator this is a standard symbol for window these standards they have been maintained through various national and international codes of practice okay and this is quite old okay so uh, it started uh, around the time when uh, industrial revolution was happening and after that especially during the world war times uh, this language of graphics this communication through graphics it it flourished but initially it remained confined as a military language so uh, so it wasn't used commonly but after world war 2 specially it came out and it was used more and more by engineers and architects so if you look at this is one of the drawings by uh, leonardo da vinci and it is one of the most ancient languages of course leonardo da vinci is not a very old in uh, times person but he if you ever uh, get a chance to see how he drew so this is his idea his uh, you know representation of the idea that, that he conceived conceptualized for a flying machine basically an airplane so based on the wings of a bat so he was inspired by the wings of a bat and he was trying to convert all of uh, all of this you know uh, design into a workable thing so basically there is a very uh, i should say a notional idea of what i want and then how will it work out how will it really work so there is a fine balance between the creative aspect of an idea and the analytical the scientific aspect of the idea for it to work so unlike sketching and painting it is little different because it is not just uh, you know creative side it's not just fancy idea that okay i can paint and i don't really need to uh, materialize it in a physical form but when we are talking about graphics engineering graphics or architectural graphics we are really looking at conceptualizing this idea materializing this idea in a physical form so if we look at the need for graphics in engineering uh, and design we see that design process will always include the graphic skills it has to without understanding this language of graphics we will not be able to communicate our idea to uh, to the other person 
So we can't always tell and even if we are communicating in general, the language of general communication, we cannot communicate to the other person what we really want to design. So it is essential to visual communication methods in the design process. So engineering graphics or architectural graphics is used to communicate the pro process or issue or subject whatever is being discussed and to make that idea very clear and not just for the other person but also to ourselves as we go on to design as we go on to draw it makes things even clearer to us who's drawing that that how it is going to progress how the idea is going to progress so uh, what I call as engineering graphics or architectural graphics is also known as mechanical drawing or engineering drawing or you, you could also uh, find it in the name of engineering graphics. All of these they mean the same thing and they have more or less similar content if you talk about architectural graphics. So you might be uh, dealing more with the symbols which are uh, used to represent different parts of the building. For example, the wall looks like that, the uh, the ceiling would uh, be represented like that, a window would be represented like that. However, if I'm talking about engineering graphics where an engineer is using it to design uh, die or nuts or bolts or different machines, the language will remain the same. The graphical language will remain the same. It's just that the symbols which are being used mostly popularly for communicating that particular idea will be slightly different though they are standard. So if a nut is represented as something in engineering graphics, it will be represented as exactly the same in architectural graphics as well. It's just that it is not being used enough. So in a sense, what I mean to say is all these are the same things. It's the same subject. You could pick up any book for mechanical drawing or engineering drawing or engineering graphics or architectural graphics and you would find the same fundamentals being discussed especially when we are talking about orthographic projection. So what is the difference between a sketch versus a drawing and I think I have somehow some way uh, discussed this but a sketch is basically just representation of an idea which is in our mind. So if we looked at the uh, the drawing which was made by Leonardo da Vinci which I just uh, showed. So it had a sketch like thing and then uh, by the side it also had a drawing with some little dimensions on it. So a sketch is a representation of an idea but it is quite ambiguous. A different person, any different person can understand it in a different way. However, the drawing is absolutely unambiguous. It will convey only one thing and that is what it is supposed to convey. So sketch while could be conceived, perceived as different by different people, drawing cannot be. Drawing will only convey one meaning. So within drawing, when we come to this technical drawing, we and especially when we are talking about this architectural drawing, it is the sketch of a built environment which along with the analytical drawings that can very clearly convey the overall image of this building. The built environment which is in question, which is in discussion, which is being designed to be constructed tomorrow. So they have all the details, the dimensions, the measurements, the different types of materials which are going to be used. It has utmost detail which will be required to design it tomorrow. So when we are talking about this graphical communication, we are basically looking at both the mental skill. So you have to perceive things. You have to be able to visualize, imagine what is going to happen and then manual skill to translate all that imagination onto the paper. So it's putting both of these things together. It is using both sides of your brain basically. So uh, on one hand, we are imagining what we are wanting to design. Say a building, a house in uh, mountains is what we are designing. Okay, so I just visualize that, okay, this house is going to have uh, a lavish big balcony and it will have uh, a sloping roof and it will have a wooden, uh, column and it will have very huge vast windows 
as I say all these things, I have a certain picture of this house in my mind. I know, okay, what I am imagining is this, this, this kind of house. While you are listening to what I am saying, you are also imagining what this house could be. The moment I start, I have to get it constructed. I will have to convert this creative idea into a design, a drawing which is analytical. So it's not just that, okay, I can have any slope. I would have to know, okay, what size of the rafter would be needed? What size of the column would be needed to hold this beam and this rafter? What kind of, uh, you know, material would go for the flooring? What kind of foundation would go? And I have to talk about all those analytical uh, aspects of this design for it to actually. So this was my idea, for example, of the home. Here it is a car and I have to actually make it like this where I have all these individual dimensions, I have the materials and everything so that this idea which I had in my mind be converted into a reality through with the help of these drawings. So that is what is the sole purpose of this graphical communication. Now when I say that it is a very standard drawing, you cannot have it would also mean this and that. No, there is no scope for that. So there are certain very rigid rules when we draw these, uh, when we make these drawings, when we go ahead with graphical communication, graphics. So one, that the lines that will be used, they have to be of uniform thickness and uh, density. When we, when we move the pencil, so things have been made much simpler with the help of these uh, CAD software, okay, computer aided drawing software, for example, as AutoCAD is there, you have, uh, you know, many other softwares which are used to draw these drawings. So it's much easier, you select a line thickness and you draw a line of a certain dimension, certain measurement, and it will be absolutely uniform. But when the drawing was mainly done by hand, and by the way, in this particular lecture, in this particular course altogether, we are going to uh, draw it by hand and you will learn how to draw it by hand. So that is why I am emphasizing that the lines have to be of uniform thickness. In graphics, the variation in line thickness also has different connotations, it's that it has different meaning. If I have to show uh, a line which is being seen in plan, I will probably, I will make it thicker. If I have to show another beam which is in the ceiling right above this, I will make it lighter. So there is a difference. That's why when we use these lines, any line, it has to be of uniform thickness. We cannot use fancy printing and coloring and shading and associated artistry because a drawing will be reproduced multiple times. For example, I have to design a space, a room, a hall, say. And there are multiple things which are going to be fitted in this room. One, there will be uh, these brick walls. So civil works will be there, walls, columns, beams, ceiling, flooring, everything. So there, the same set of drawing with slight uh, variations will be given to the civil contractor. Then we have to get all these electricity works done. So there will be lights, there will be fans, there will be conduits running. The same thing has to, the same set of drawing with of course additional information related to electrical will be going to the electrical contractor. There will be another set probably the mechanical one, the plumbing, the this, that, furniture guy. So everybody will be uh, using this drawing and it has to be reproduced. So we cannot put colors, it, it will produce shades and it, it will, it can be perceived wrongly. So we cannot have any color printing, shading or any artistic uh, representation on engineering drawings, okay. The next, we have to include only the information which is required so that the communication is absolutely clear. So we can't have, we should not include anything which is not needed in the drawing. So only the necessary ones, we cannot have unnecessary, uh, irrelevant information added on the sheets. It's very simple and it's very clear. Uh, 
and we use only standard symbols and abbreviations. So, the standards as I said for representing fan or light or uh, any uh, plumbing uh, accessory, everything has a standard symbol and there are abbreviations which will be used and it will only be read that way. So, we have to know what those standards are, what those standard abbreviations and standard symbols are and the same be used. The next we have to ensure that the drawing is correctly dimensioned with no unnecessary details. So, a drawing is almost meaningless if it does not carry a dimension along. I might make a room but if I do not know what will be the size of this room 3 meter by 6 meter or whatever it will have no meaning it cannot be constructed. So, it always will come should come along with dimensions and of course the scale to read it. So, if we come to this almost the conclusion of this introductory lecture I will conclude it by uh, narrating by telling you the qualities of a good drawing. When do you know that the drawing is a good drawing? When it is a standardized drawing are we talking about architectural drawing engineering drawing. So, it has to be standardized the symbols the representations used in the drawing have to be the standard ones. Second, the moment it is standardized it will automatically become disambiguous but still we have to try to maintain that the drawing is not ambiguous at all. It should convey what it meant to convey and not something else. Third thing, it has to be scaled uniformly and it has the scale has to be clearly communicated along with the dimensions. So, it has to clearly show the dimensions. Now, when I say scaled uniformly what I mean is we could have a we could have a huge big drawing ok. Now, if I have one piece of the drawing here and another piece of the drawing here it should not have some other scale here and some other scale there. This entire thing has to have the same skill in case it is like a blow up of this you know a smaller part then in that case the scale has to be specifically mentioned a different scale will be specifically mentioned here otherwise for this entire drawing the same scale will be maintained and it will be used. So, uh, before I close this lecture uh, here I will quickly take you through what we are going to read in the coming weeks. So, the week 1 will actually be the introduction. So, we will we will understand about the uh, principles of engineering graphics uh, which we have covered in today's lecture, different drawing instruments, how different stationary materials will be used, uh, what are the purposes, different sheet layouts, how do we fix the sheet, cleaning the instruments, different types of lines and graphic symbols, lettering. So, basically the introductory stuff which you say the vocabulary building or uh, I should not even vocabulary building but in language uh, like the understanding knowing the alphabets and some basic words how to put words together something like that. In week 2 we will start with dimensioning and scales because scales are very important. So, we will understand about scales and then we will start about basic geometrical construction using these equipments uh, and then we will go on to uh, understand how the curves in uh, engineering practice will be used and different conic, uh, conic uh, sections. We 3 we will start with orthographic projections. So, we will understand the orthographic projection the principles and then we will uh, majorly work uh, in first angle projection uh, though we will understand about first angle third angle both and then we will go on to start with projection of lines. So, then we week 4 we will go with projection of lines week 5 will move on to projection of planes and the comp complexity of these different projections will uh, continue to increase. Week 6 we will have we will move on to solids ok from planes we will move on to solids and uh, the whole solids. Week 7 we will look at sections of these solids. So, if the solids are being cut then how do what do we see? Week 8 we will move on to spherical surfaces how do we develop different surfaces and then intersection of these uh, different solids.
So that's all for today. I'll meet you in the next lecture where we'll be seeing what are the different equipments and instruments, tools which we will be needing stationary items to uh, carry on with this uh, course on engineering drawing. So after the second lecture, I would uh, uh, request all of you to kindly procure these uh, tools so that you can go ahead with uh, your drawing as we move ahead with the lectures. So thank you and have a nice day.